Hey guys, what's up? This is Cube. A uh, slightly different type of video today. We're actually going to be doing a review of uh, Ava Media Live Gamer HD, which is a capture card from Ava Media. Um, I was lucky enough to win it in an ETF2L competition the other day, and I promised Ava Media that I would do a review. Um, so it's a, basically a capture card that fits inside your desktop PC, uh, one of the PCI slots, um, and it helps make recording and streaming of your game much easier since it takes a lot of the workload off your CPU. I'm actually dying to get into the box. It's been sat on my desk for a couple of days waiting for me to do a review and I haven't opened it yet. So let's take a look what's inside. The Live Gamer HD will allow you to capture your gameplay in a similar way to how Fraps or DX Tori works, except without using the software on your PC, it's actually using the card instead. So you take an output straight from your graphics card into the Live Gamer HD. So minimal computer resources are used to capture your gameplay. And the card also has a uh, encoder built on chip, so if you choose not to do the capturing with the card, you can also, or you can instead, I should say, do the encoding on the card as a, as a built-in H.264 encoder. Uh, in the box, we're going to have a quick look at everything that was inside. You have, obviously, the capture card, the USB record button, an HDMI cable, an HDMI to DVI cable, 3.5mm audio cable, an HDMI to DVI adapter, uh, the manual, a three-month... Um, subscription to XSplit which is included and the install disk which is drivers and the Rec Central software. Now we're going to have a look at the Live Gamer HD itself, here it is it's uh, quite a small card as you can see PCI Express there's four inputs onto the card or two inputs, two outputs, there's HDMI in, HDMI out, audio in and audio out and it's a PCI Express slot so I'm going to just zoom in to my computer and as you can see above the graphics card there's a little slot there uh, which your motherboard should have, which is PCI Express. It just slots in nicely as any graphics card does. Now there's a few different ways of setting up the Live Gamer HD. I'm going to start with the most common, which is to take an output straight from your graphics card to your monitor, as you normally do. And then if your graphics card has a secondary output, an HDMI out or a second DVI out, take that output and put it into the Live Gamer HD. And then you duplicate your screen in Windows. So the same output is going to your screen as is going to the Live Gamer HD. The other choice is to use something called pass-through mode, which is to take your output from your graphics card and put it into the HDMI in of the Live Gamer HD, and then the HDMI out from the Live Gamer HD, then through to your monitor. Next, we're going to look at the Rec Central software, which comes with the Live Gamer HD. Uh, this software will help you capture and stream, although I haven't really tested the streaming much. I've just been using XSplit, which we'll go over a bit later. So annoying little spinning icon starts up and then you've got a few general settings, your language, transparency of the window, um, a few things to do with the Rec Central button which I didn't have plugged in at the time so I wasn't able to choose many of them. Uh, you've got t options about choosing to start up with Windows, um, where you want to save files and things like that. Next up we've got Capture which is the recording, so what your Fraps does anyway. Um, has it three different options, amateur, pro, so I'm just going to load up the pro one here and you can see different options depending on whether you're capturing from a games console or PC, what you want to do with the audio, you've got a variety of different bit rates all the way up to 20,000 uh, FPS and your resolutions and then you can save different profiles for different games if you want to record at different frame rates etc. Next up we're going to look at streaming so you can enter into the settings again you get the choice of what you're going to be doing uh, games console or another PC or the current PC it gives you some nice little diagrams showing you how to set it up and then you go on and you can choose your video source, your audio source, your microphone settings uh, you get video settings where you get to choose the bit rate and it gives you a picture depending on what bit rate you've set up which is pretty horrendous because that's what 2500 kilobytes per second is meant to look like and it looks a lot better and who could stream at 20,000 kilobytes per second I don't know um, some hotkey settings, that's about it really for streaming and then you've got a shortcut just to the video folder where you save all the things there's some settings on the stream page where you can just choose you know, Twitch or Owned you enter in your account details, so that's how you actually connect to the streaming platform and that's about it really right next up we're going to look at XSplit which is probably some software that you guys that stream are a bit more familiar with there's a bit more compatibility with XSplit because they've obviously been working with Ava Media on the product so you get the option here of whether you want to use the capture card to capture or if you want to use it to encode so first of all we're going to go across and do the capture it's pretty easy you just add a camera and then you get your Ava Media HD capture card there 
select that and you'll see exactly what you see on your desktop screen which for me right now is the XSplit window so we're going to get inception style as we make this full screen and the window repeats and repeats uh, you may notice the color looks a little bit off but that's pretty easy to change you just go into the color tab and up one of the values and it looks much more natural and that's about it really so all we have right now is the graphics card connected to the Live Gamer HD and it outputs exactly what you have on screen so on top of that you can add your webcam or your media files your text and that's as easy as it is you just go into your broadcast settings and uh, check your bit rates and things like that um, you want to be using the x264 codec which means your CPU is going to be doing the encoding because the capture card is doing the capturing so your bit rates, your qualities, all that nice stuff next we're going to look at what you want to do if you want to use it for encoding which means you don't need anything plugged into the card actually just having it plugged into the PCI Express port is fine so you'd start by capturing your game with either the game source or DX story as you normally would and then you're going to be using the card to do the encoding so if you go into broadcast choose your channel and you see down here where it says codec you're going to change that from x264 to the Ava Media capture card you see that so you select that choose your bit rates all that good stuff and then all the encoding is going to be done by the capture card N none of it is going to be done by your CPU one thing to note here is that the encoder on the chip isn't as good as the software encoding that you would do with your CPU I've found that it's about three or four hundred kilobytes per second worse so if you're used to streaming at say 20, uh, 2500 kilobytes per second that if you're using the on-chip encoder I'd say that looks like it's about 2100, 2200 kilobytes per second. It's worse quality. Not sure why that is. I guess it's just not a very good hardware encoder. But obviously, if you find that DX Story is really good for capturing and it doesn't reduce your frame rate too much and you just want to use the encoding, then this is a good advantage of the card over other cards that don't have this ability. Right, next we're going to be looking at a bit of gameplay. This was just recorded using the Rec Central software, which is included. Um, Resolution 720p and the frame rate's 60 frames per second. I'm just gonna stay quiet so you can watch the gameplay and see the frame rate staying high in the top right corner. Alert! The control point has been captured. Now that you've watched me failing at killing medics, I want to talk about one of the biggest issues of the card, which is unfortunately the screen tearing that you get when you use the card for capturing. I've paused at a few different points here so you can see the screen tearing there in the bottom left on the railing. Again here there's two tears, one about a third down and one about a third up from the bottom. Uh, it's a real issue, you don't get any of this actually in your gameplay, it's just for the stream or for the recording. and it just it's one of those things that once you notice it you just see it all the time I'm sure you can see it without me even pausing but here's one of the worst examples when you turn quickly just look at how the edge there has been teared three times four times maybe uh, it's such a horrible issue and it really is one of the biggest downfalls of this card I'd say that if you're using the card to capture console games or racing games or MOBA games League of Legends, Dota 2, things like that it's not going to be anywhere near as noticeable if noticeable at all it's really just an FPS game where you're turning corners really quickly and you want to keep a high frame rate you're going to get this horrible screen tearing on your stream or on your recordings at first I thought this was an issue just to do with me using a 120Hz screen and then having it duplicated so that the 60Hz card would pick up the same image but after speaking to Ava Media it seems to be a similar issue with 60Hz monitors as well it's just not noticeable at all in racing games, MOBA games, League of Legends, Dota 2 console games it's just really FPS games that it becomes noticeable at because you're turning corners quickly and there's a lot of edges so you just notice the screen tearing so if you're the kind of person that's really fussy about what, how your stream looks you know you spend a lot of time and eventually money if you're going to be buying this card then if you're streaming FPS games I just really wouldn't recommend the card unless you're going to be using it for encoding and even then it's nearly a 200 pound card and 
the encoding on the chip isn't that great so I would say if you've got the £200 to spend just spend it on a better CPU and then keep using the CPU to capture and encode you'll get a better looking stream that way obviously if you want the freedom of being able to do console games um, and maybe you don't mind the screen tearing or you want you just want the freedom or you have a second PC or anything like that then this card is great it's a really good option I really would recommend it if anybody wants to stream console games or record their gameplay but for FPS games the capturing and the screen tearing is just too much of an issue for me as I said earlier the encoder is good I, that's what I use the card for now um, but to spend 200 pounds on the just using it as an encoder I don't really recommend it as I said buy a better CPU if you can uh, and hopefully Avermedia will be able to produce some really decent products because this is really nearly there there's just one issue holding it back which is the screen tearing hopefully they'll be able to fix that in the new revisions I think they've got a product coming out on the 13th of January which is a portable version of this card so let's have a look see if they've fixed any of the issues then overall really nice product as I said use it for capturing your games consoles or your second PC or your non FPS games or encoding but if you want to stream TF2 or an FPS game and you're wanting to use it for capturing screen tearing is just too much of an issue right now but thanks for watching guys see you next time